Well I Am reveals the truth about ADHD and stimulant medication. Many things about this exclusive Disruptors interview with Will I Am will surprise you, especially when he believes that to be successful, being a good person is not enough. It's been proven that ADHD was fueled by pharma, singing about it, writing about it, that's not enough. We debate the death of the current media and what the next evolution of that really is. Why are people so scared of it? Because I think people forgot that these industries were the advanced technology at some point in time. Will I Am has strong opinions on how he believes social media has affected humanity, and he has one final message for his haters. Why are people so scared of it doing things like that? Like in the film industry, they're scared of it being able to essentially replace their career. Everyone seems so scared. Because I think people forgot that these industries were the advanced technology at some point in time. But we have to remember that in 1823, what we call the music industry right now didn't exist. 1723, concept of songs that we know now, that was not the concept of song. 1623, 1523, 1423, the printing press had not been invented yet. So sheet music, and orchestras playing through sheet music like they easily do now did not exist in 1423. Yes, there was sheet music, but it being ready at a snap. Somebody had to chart it out by hand. Not, there, was, there probably wasn't that many orchestras. And if they were, they were in the church. That was the music experience. In, 1423, 1323, what, what, what songs were people singing that summer? That hot summer of 1323. <laughs> like, yo, that shit was this shit. Sing that shit again, yo, you heard that shit? Like, that's not what the fuck was happening. <laughs> so you gotta think of music in its entirety, technology in its entirety, to think about where we are right now. And where we are right now is a disruption to the music industry, not to music. This concept of recording music, do you actually have to record anymore? In this entertainment industry, there's three industries. Recording music, touring music, publishing music. All separate legal departments, all separate industries that give separate advances for artists to make money. And the streaming industry has already disrupted the recording industry. I remember recording songs, selling recordings, and it's far more rewarding than streaming recordings. So speaking of disruption, but we've managed to accept streaming versus recordings. So what, we're just gonna, we're just going to freaking like comp contradict ourselves as far as the next evolution of a music experience, I think a fourth industry is going to rise. There's gonna be predictive industry, essence. And in that predictive industry, artists, essence and likeness, you need to own that. Like, we have credit cards. In 1723, there probably wasn't credit cards. 1823, the concept of credit is not what it was right now. 1923, did I say 1923 already? Oh, yeah, 1923, <laughs> the concept of credit card was not what we know of it today. And in 2023, we know what credit is. We know what like, you know, mobile payments, mobile banks, branchless banks, cloud, crypto, it's all new stuff. So when it comes to banking your data, where, where, where's my data bank? We know data's gold. Like, and we know the companies that are leveraging your data. Data monarchies. And they do such a good job of it that you don't even know the power of your own data. There's not even a place that's like, you need to bank your data with us the data bank you could trust. There's not even a <laughs> commercial for that yet. Yeah. Why is that important? Because eventually you're gonna have your own personal AI 
and your data bank is going to be responsible for prompting the AI for you, not AI you access. Right? Imagine you bought a nice house and you went to the, the person that sold the house, you'd be like, excuse me, sir, uh, I noticed there's no bathroom here. Where's the toilet? Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. There's um, a toilet you can share. The whole neighborhood shares this toilet. But get the fuck out of here. Why in the fuck am I gonna buy a house where we all in the neighborhood share a toilet? And the reason why they did that is to bank everybody's in the neighborhood to make sense of that and sell it to companies. You can imagine that was the case, but that's not the case. But it probably is because they, we all share the same plumbing. Different toilets, same plumbing. So we don't know if they're banking our no pun intended on but we do know they're banking your data. We know they're leveraging your We know the cookie monster has their hands in the cookie jar. They make its nice little word called cookies for it to throw you off on the importance of that data. So yeah, I think it's important for people to understand the power of their data. We, we are just right here in a new um, renaissance. Music and AI is cute, it's awesome. It's not going to be therapeutic for the people that rely on music to express themselves for, for uh, that's therapy. I have a broken heart, I gotta write it out. I'm concerned about the world, oh, I gotta write it out. I just experienced the world in a beautiful place, in a beautiful way, I gotta write this out. Yes, cool, AI is great, do that. Do you think social media's been good for humanity? On a larger part, yeah. It, it, it has provided wealth for folks that the traditional entertainment paths would have, the, the, the gatekeepers probably wouldn't have let them in. So social media kind of like broke through these, these, uh, these barricades that the entertainment industry, um, but the entertainment industry didn't do that on purpose, it's just limited. Because film costs a lot of money. Re microphones and traditional microphones and tape to record albums and lacquer needle to lacquer to record, it costs a lot of money. A studio was like a, a city block long. The council to mix the songs on were like pretty, pretty big, required lots of energy, um, electricity, engineers. And so who got a record deal? You had to be super selective because it was expensive to record. Songs and films. Tape, what, what went on the tape was like, yo, we gotta make sure, we gotta rehearse. Why we gotta rehearse? Well, shit, what's this tape? This tape's expensive, this film's expensive. So let's rehearse. So people's skill sets were like, uh, always vibrating at high frequency because to record it down to film and tape was expensive. So now here we have this thing, not expensive, to record. It's expensive to make this, but the people that made this, people paid with their lives for you to have it for cheap. This is expensive as fuck, actually. But to put information on it, the memory is not like tape. It's not like film. So the skill level to enter here probably is not the skill level of a Roberta Flack or a, you know, the recording industry skill level or the acting industry, the, the, the movie industry skill level, but the abundance the amount of people that can make a living from here. So first the quality, the, the appreciation of talent and quality comes down, but the abundance of how many people benefit and can make a living from it is awesome. It, democratization, and that's great. Diversity, that's great. Um, inclusion, that's amazing. Uh, so yeah, social media has been 
awesome, but also has been bad. Um, the mount, that's because of the algorithm. The algorithm promotes the most hideous shit sometimes. It makes people feel ugh, bad, suicide has went up, depression has gone up. The hate, because the algorithm fans hate, mm. amplifies hate. And if they could tweak the algorithm, probably the companies that are incent have incentives to keep it as it is are going to be um, rendered obsolete when Gen Z says, nah, I think there's a better way to do it. So we're relying on Gen Z. Whether the Gen Z is doing that or folks that have the heart of a Gen Z, of the Gen Z, to bring Zen, my G. See, I did to flip the words. <laughs> yeah. From Gen Z to Gen, my Z. To Zen, my G, yeah, yeah. Wordplay, what? <laughs> 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 For years, people have been asking me where I buy my watches. Many of you may know I'm a watch collector, I'm a watch investor, and those as an asset class have done me very well in the last 15 years. I have never shared where I source my watches from or my watch dealer until now. My watch dealer used to be a professional footballer for Manchester United and he formed a watch brand called Broadwalk and he sources the higher end brands like Rolex, Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe and Richard Mille. I trust him, I've used him for many years and recently we've done a partnership, hence I'm inviting you if you want to start investing in watches and protect your money from the banks and inflation to check out Broadwalk. That's B-R-O-A-D-W-A-L-K and the website is broadwalkgroup.com. Com. The email is sales at broadwalkgroup.com. And please don't share this, but his number is 07496 878153. Obviously, only message him if you're serious about buying and investing in the higher end watches. People have been asking me for years, and for the first time ever, you can get access to my watch dealer. Yeah, I've had this particular conversation with a lot of really interesting, smart, creative people. Um, I had it with um, one of the brothers of Bross and he was like, just be kind and do great work and it's good enough. But is it? So, no, that's not enough. You have to go out there and be philanthropic as well. So that's why I went back to my neighborhood and started a school after school program in 2008, before Boom Boom Pow. And, um, and I got a feeling. And, and I've continued that program, giving these kids from my community robotics and computer science skill sets. Now, almost over 12 years later, um, we serve over 15, it's over 14,000 students. We've sent kids to Stanford, to Brown, to Dartmouth. We have amazing scholars from our program. And uh, singing about it, writing about it, that's not enough. Mm. You have to do about it. And, and technology, I'm a tech enthusiast. Um, music, I'm a musician because of tech. I play the computer, not the piano. I play the computer, not the drums. I play the computer, not the sax or the trumpet. That's my instrument. And it's the reason why I, I, I love tech so much. I, I, I salute the engineers. Um, had we won a Grammy on camera, I would have thanked the engineers for making the gramophone. That, that's a piece of technology, mm. that gramophone. Um, but, uh, yeah, you have to do about it. Mm. Um, and, and so, like writing about, writing about it is great. It's, for those that do, that's awesome. Mm. For those that sing about it, that's great. Um, because that's a start. Um, but then all the invisible folks that are out there philanthropic providing these programs for folks, that's amazing. Um, and we need to put some visibility on the invisible angels out there. Um, because 
like I said, the algorithm renders a lot of these invisible angels invisible. Uh, yeah. mm. um, I'm going to need to look at my notes for this because in I wanted to research all the different things I thought I could find that you do because I already knew you do a lot than a, a lot more than a lot of people know. So this is what I found. Um, rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, actor, designer, coder, investor, tech entrepreneur. I've probably missed some. Co to, to clear up some, so coding, I'm not a coder. You learned some, did you? Yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm a coder. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you learn something and you're not, <laughs> you know? I learned how to play baseball. Am I a baseball player? Not. Nah. <laughs> I mean, I can hit it sometimes, but I don't consider myself a baseball player. I learned to do some coding, and I wish I had, I wish I was as fluent in coding as I'm fluent as songwriting. Um, yeah, but I'm not there. Um, designer. I design some clothes, but I'm not a designer. That's not my like. That's not my thing. I'm, I design stuff for me. Um, but that's not. I can't claim like. I, I respect designers and coders too much. That just because I dabbled in it. Or dabble. Doesn't mean I'm that. So I'm not a designer. Even though I design, and I'm not a coder even though I try to learn it. The other ones, producing, I loved, I love producing from the editing side. I'm a, I love to edit. You send me a song and be like, yeah, let me edit that. <laughs> like I love editing. I love to write to other people's music, beats. I could, I could make beats and write to my own beats. And that, that process is great, but my writing to other people's stuff, it just comes out fast. I love that process. Um, actor, eh. I was in Wolverine. I look, I, I watch that back. I'm like, you know what I mean? That's cool. I can't say I'm an actor. I respect, act, I, Leonardo DiCaprio grew up with that cat ever since we were 15. That guy's an actor. 16 going to clubs together, he's the best. So <laughs> I'm nothing, no way, bro. I'm not even in the same league. So acting, nah, just because I was in a movie doesn't make me an actor, but I've acted. Um, and uh, what, what else is that? Investor. Investor, entrepreneur. yes. Entrepreneur. Investor, entrepreneur, yep. Yeah. Entrepreneur is like, Investor, I made some pretty cool bets. Invested in Tesla in 2007, before, 2006, seven before Elon took over the company. Um, Twitter, early on. Pinterest, Dropbox, um, OpenAI, Anthropic, Hugging Face, and Runway. Um, made some bad investments as well. Uh, missed out on some, some big ones because I was seeing it from, I made a, the biggest, learned the biggest lesson of my life. One of the biggest lessons of my life. I met Brian Chetsky before they had launched Airbnb. And he, he, they were like, yo, we got 200K for you to come in. And uh, I'm like, wait, what about room service? What about concierge? And I was so like seeing it from my perspective of traveling the world, going to the best hotels, that I couldn't see going to somebody's house or renting a room or renting somebody's house without concierge, room service, and uh, you know, mm. maintenance. Like I don't think that, I don't think that's gonna work. So I didn't I didn't invest in Airbnb. Missed out, mega, like big time missed out. Um, and that, that lesson is, 
never look at things or only look at things from your POV on what you would like. You gotta think about what other people might like and enjoy. And then how to improve concepts that other people could benefit from. And not look at it from like, well this is what I like, other people are gonna like it too. That's not always the case. Now I've been on a mission for 17 years to help as many people on this planet get better financial knowledge. If like me, you'd like to make, manage and multiply more money, I recommend that you join my digital financial freedom platform. It's really easy to join. You just type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M. There you're going to learn my four M's of making, managing, maintaining and multiplying more money. And the even better news is there's no risk to you because it costs less than 20 pence a day to join. You can cancel any time. Join right now. I'll also give you my 12-week Money Mastermind University completely for free. It exposes the banking system and teaches you how to play them at their own game. If you join Rob.team right now, you get that completely for free. Just type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M. We'll see you inside with the 10,000 other members in Rob.team. Have you always been that way? Because um, I was petrified of rejection probably till I was 35. I'm 44 now. I had to bang it out of my head, unlearn it hard with therapy and personal development and God knows how many books. I was the fat kid in school. I got rejected from sports and girls. And from age 13, when I lost all the weight, it was just still there for, what, a quarter of a century mm. until being an entrepreneur and, and business and having somewhat of a public profile finally shook it out of me. <laughs> but I don't get that baggage with you. But there's people like me who have got that baggage. I think because I was raised in an all Mexican neighborhood and we were, there, were, there were only a few black families in my neighborhood, that a lot of that stuff got out of me because we were different. And then being poor, going to a rich school and seeing rich folks go to school with lunch bags and lunch pails and you had like a government ticket for free food um, and you had secondhand clothes but the rich folks said, wow, I like your outfit. Oh, you, you like this? Yeah, you dress cool. Oh, encouragement goes a long way, especially when you're different or, when, if, or you're underserved or underdeveloped or poor. And I remember going to school, I didn't have a belt one day, so I put a tie, my uncle's tie on as a belt, tie the double Windsor knot, and that was my belt. And the rich kids were like, dang, William, that's funky. Oh, he, oh you like this? <laughs> oh, well, shit then. What? Well, damn. <laughs> so your, my, uh, my disability financially became my ability because creativity was my currency. Creativity is my currency. I'm rich creatively. I may not have money now, but as soon as I get these ideas out, shit, <laughs> these motherfuckers are gonna grow. So, you know, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Somebody's gonna talk shit to you. Now, what if you're a farmer? Take a perspective of a farmer. Farmers need shit. It's called manure. So if somebody's talking shit, give it to me. I need that shit. Talk all the shit you want. I'm gonna grow some shit with that shit. <laughs> Cause I'm a farmer, bro. There's nothing you can tell me that's gonna fuck up my frequency. So why don't you save your energy? But if you wanna give out energy, well, send me that energy, bro. I'm a fucking, I am a fucking, what is that called? The, 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 on uh, the motherfucking shit that brings the sun in, sunlight in, you know that shit? Greenhouse? Oh. Let's go, no, no, solar, solar panel. Ah, bosh. What, I'm Jenny a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a solar panel. If you're gonna waste your energy talking shit about me, well shit, that's too bad for you. You giving me the energy I need to fucking go. What? 
So what? Oh, what? I'm going to fucking take this. I'm going to take off. I fall. You going to laugh at me? Well, shit, I need that energy to get back up. Oh, that's funny. To you. <laughs> that shit was funny, huh? <laughs> I fucked up, right? God damn it. I ain't going to fuck up next time because I learned. And if I fall again, guess what? That shit was funny, right? Who get, oh shit, I scraped my, well that hurts though. Me, my knee that's bleeding here, that actually hurts. My emotions, that shit was funny. I'm not, I'm not, that's not my kryptonite. You know why that's not my kryptonite? Because I survived crypts tonight. That's gangbang. Right, your words are not going to release blood. You know why? Because I grew up around bloods. I grew up around trollos and crips, and that's more terrifying than any words that you have to say to me. Any opinion perspectives. Nah. You gotta have that mentality. And you gotta be able to take constructive criticism. If somebody's laughing at you because they say your breath smells, you gotta be like, oh, damn it, my breath does smell, huh? Oh shit, I gotta do something about that. They're not, people are not talking shit only to talk shit. They're not hating just to hate. This mentality is like, yo, they hating on me. No, they just hate that your breath smells. You should do something about it. There's some truth to some of the things that people say. You gotta be able to, you have to be self-aware. Maybe your breath does smell. Check it if somebody says it does. Mm. Maybe, just maybe, and if, and if it doesn't, and if you're the only one checking, you got to be able to then tell your friends, like, yo, my shit smell. I mean, were they? And if your friend says no, but then another friend says yes, then you need to check that one friend. Or you go to the dentist and be like, yo, do I got, like, is there something going on here? Because a, a couple people have been telling me about my breast things. Then a dentist who's get, who gets paid to make sure you're all right is going to tell you the truth. As soon as you go to a dentist after everybody's been saying your breath smells, their whole premise is to get your shit correct. So you cannot fold or get shaken up from public opinion. Because if, if, if there's truth in that public opinion, then you gotta use that truth to grow. Even if it's personal like your breath smells. It's okay to be told the truth. What you gonna do about it? I woke up this morning, my breast stung. And then I brushed my teeth. That was my favorite piece so far. Thank you, Will. Oh, the breath? Yeah, no, the, the whole piece. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> coping with and dealing with ADHD. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how you label yourself, but plenty of people were telling me you label yourself with ADHD. I have a different view on labels, but um, what's your view on dealing with it? harnessing it for creativity? Is it something that you identify that you do have? Is it a kryptonite or a superpower? In school, um, I've, I've always been hyperactive. I've always been, you know, the kid in school that was always moving about, um, hard to focus on what the teacher was trying to tell me. Is that just because you weren't interested though in that? Sorry to interrupt. Um, yes and no. I would have been interested if they made it interesting. You can make any subject that's not interesting, interesting. Mm. And so then maybe the kid doesn't have ADHD. I think ADHD is not the problem for the person that they claim has ADHD. It's the problem for the person that doesn't know how to, you know, reach a hyperactive person. And hyperactivity is a superpower. And if you take a look at all the folks that impact, uh, a lot of them are hyperactive. They have hyper thoughts. Mm. Whether their thoughts are hyper or their energy is hyper, um, that hyperactivity an attention disorder, okay, let's break that down, focus. And let's 
let's take a look at society as a whole now because of this conditioner, where everybody's mind has been reconfigured to notification and pop-ups. And let's see how many people now can have full-on focused conversations. I guarantee you, most of the people in, in popular culture probably has some form of attention disorder. And it's been proven that ADHD was fueled by pharma to um, give kids drugs to make it easier for teachers to have like this um, one size fits all teaching um, style. Not every kid's the same. So to expect little Bobby to learn like Melissa, well, that's not fair to Bobby if Bobby is hyperactive. That doesn't mean Bobby is not brilliant. As a matter of fact, I bet you Bobby is brilliant and you're suppressing them to learn at the speed of everyone else. What if we taught Bobby at his speed and, and focused on what Bobby's really good at? Maybe Bobby's not a historian. Maybe Bobby's not a mathematician. But maybe Bobby is a problem solver. Maybe Bobby's a, a strategic. Maybe he's a freaking a wizard at other things. Has anybody tried to figure out what Bobby's superpower is? Or you can, are you labeling Bobby to be like everybody else in the class that fits into this teaching regimen? That doesn't really, you know, point to everybody getting jobs after they go through this course of school. Like, does education really produce careers? Right now, in society, you have to have a diploma to work for a company. Not mine. <laughs> but for, to have a company, you just have to have an idea. Like, if you want to have, like, the best job in the world, companies would be like, um, what college did you go to? What's your degrees? But to create a company that people work for, you just have to have an idea. Now, how do we get those people to start creating ideas? Right, Bill Gates, I mean, sorry, Steve Jobs. I'm sorry, Mark Zuckerberg. Did he graduate college? Right. Austin Russell, the guy from Luminar, created LADAR technology for uh, autonomous vehicles. Did he graduate college? And this is dangerous because I, I try to go to the hood and tell kids to go to college, so. <laughs> you still need to go to college, don't get me wrong. But teaching everybody at, to, 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 to be at the same speed as everybody, you're gonna miss a lot of diamonds. Mm. If you want everybody to be rocks. If you're not taking the time to polish certain rocks to realize that they're diamonds, you're gonna miss out on a lot of fucking diamonds. And I think that's what we have right now, mm. where, you're, where they're, they're medicating diamonds to be rocks instead of polishing certain rocks to be diamonds.